Hey everybody, I'm Steve Kreiner, the Dog Soldier. January 3rd, 2018, live, plain and simple predator hunting podcast. I appreciate you guys watching. It's going to be a good show. If you're not familiar with the plain and simple predator hunting podcast, we just get down to the nitty gritty of predator hunting. The nitty gritty of the predator hunting industry and the nitty gritty of the predator hunting products that we see on the shelf today. We talk about the basics. We talk about the tactics. We talk about the, the high profile people in the industry. We talk to the high profile people in the industry. We just do things my way and we have a lot of fun doing it. We say what we want, when we want, and how we want. And with all that being said, we have special guests too. Tonight, first of all, I would like to mention that Fox Pro announced, speaking of predator hunting industry, Fox Pro announces the partnership or the relationship between Fox Pro and MFK Game Calls. No one's seen this coming. Well, tonight's special guest is the one and only, the world champion Jason Grossclose from MFK Game Calls. We're going to find out just who is Jason Grossclose, how do he win the world championships, what kind of tactics he utilizes to hunt over there in the East and be so successful, and most importantly, what's up with the new relationship? With that being said, Set back and enjoy, and you damn sure better buckle up, because the Dog Soldier Predator Hunting Podcast starts now. Hey everybody, Steve Kreiner, the Dog Soldier here. What's going on? I tell you what, what a great day to be an American. It's cold outside, it's cold all the way across the country. We should be out blasting coyotes, but it's dark time and half this country's liberal and you can't hunt at night. But anyway, glad you guys are here. We are pre-recording this podcast as of five minutes ago and the messages are going crazy on my phone. People's like, oh, your internet's down, yada, yada. Well, we know the internet's down. We're already shut down the live stream, and we are rolling Plain and Simple Podcast right here, January 3rd, 2018. We got our guest with us, Jason Gross. Close. What's going on, homeboy? Hey, Steve. How's it going, buddy? Oh, man, it's going good. Just kind of chilling out, letting these lights shine in my face, look pretty for the camera, and talk to you. That's right. Good thing the lights are on you and not me if you're talking about pretty. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I tell you what, you know, it's been a, it's been a busy day for you, hasn't it? It's been a good one, man. I tell you what, uh, the announcement of Fox Pro today, it's, uh, I think it's kept everybody at MFK busy. Um, I was on the phone today. Uh, I think the announcement was a little after eight o'clock this morning and from yeah. nine o'clock till three o'clock, I don't think I got off my phone. I was having people beeping in while I was on the phone, having to call back. So it was about six hours of just continuous phone time, but man, I'm loving it. Big, nice. exciting deal for MFK and Schiller. I think it's, you know, it, it's been exciting. I think we we blew up Facebook today. Oh, yeah. Sure. I started in on you guys early. When I seen that, it was sent to me because I'm not a member of any groups or anything. I get in trouble because I run my mouth a little bit. But uh, they were showing it to me, and, and I was like, holy crap. So I got a hold of you guys, obviously, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. You guys have been supporting and been a partner of Dog Soldier for five seasons now. And, Man, we're rocking and rolling. But before we get to all the nitty gritty of the new uh, relationship between you and Fox Pro, first of all, I just want to say, from a business standpoint and from a friend standpoint, uh, I've known you well over twelve years. I've known Dave Stucks and Tory Cook, you know, over five years now. And I, I want to tell you guys, good job, because you guys, I mean, you've worked your tails off from day one. And we were just talking about it off the air a while ago. I mean, you guys eat, sleep, and breathe MFK, and you bleed it, man. And I think that's, you know, if every American put that much into their small business, Walmart wouldn't be leading the way. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, that that's the thing. And like you said, we've known each other a long time, and we, we've been friends uh, a long time. And uh, 
uh, just uh, we were actually together there at one time with Hunter Specialties yeah. and everything in the beginning. And uh, yeah, I ended up going with uh, Tori when we started out uh, MFK, which had actually started out as TC Custom Calls in yeah. the in the beginning. And uh, our uh, our mastermind marketing and uh, customer service guy Dave Stucks, which everybody knows. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's he's the guy on the front line. He's our customer service guy. So if you ever have a problem with MFK, be sure to just call Dave Stucks. He'll he'll get you he fixed up. A, uh, if you can't <laughs> but, understand uh, him, just tell him text. Yeah, you. that's exactly right. But um, yeah, man, that that's been our focus from day one as Walty. I mean, Tori and Dave and I were not only. Uh, business partners were friends first and that's what it'll always be and i think that's what it takes um uh you know our, when we first met we had a fishing trip and uh, uh we actually we met we did a we did a show down in georgia it was one of the world predator Collins championship shows yep. we did that and we hit it off and uh right after that we uh we hooked up and all went on a fishing trip for three or four days and uh man we we basically been inseparable since then i mean it, it sucks him being in arkansas and i'm from virginia with the you know 10 12 hour drive and now dave's yeah. in kansas city tory's in arkansas i'm in virginia you know we don't get to hang out as much as we'd like but still man we we talk to each other at least once a day i mean somehow and you know i think that's what it takes it's just the loyalty factor i think that's if business if all businesses had that then you know you know, small business in America would, would be, would be what it, you know, what it should be. But yeah. too many, too many people see the dollar instead of the loyalty and that sucks. Yeah, that's right, man. You know, I remember when I first met you, my little girl, she's, my little girl is, well, she's over, she's almost 11 and uh, she'll be 11 here in a few months. And when we first met, she wasn't born because I don't think I was full time with HS yet, but right. Man, when we brought you on board, I was excited, and we had such awesome plans. And then HS, you know, they they jacked around there for a lot of years, and and you know, right. course, that's why I left. And that's you know, you're like, and I don't blame you, man. You're like, gosh, I, can, I ain't doing nothing. They ain't doing nothing with me, and I'm like, I, I'm trying, but you know, I, dude, I love how it's turned out. You know, this industry is full of people I've known for a lot of years, including Mike Dillon, you know, and right. uh, Mike and Steve and and all them guys and me and al used to work together and garvin we used to film together and right this this industry is full of people that really eat breathe and sleep the job or the industry and you know there's some guys making hand calls that, that i mean they'd jump off a bridge if they couldn't you know if they had to quit making hand calls you know and i mean this is just a great place in life to be and uh man it's been I remember me and you were howling with diaphragms at them competitions. Two thousand eight's when I blew a diaphragm in the first competition, I think, in Kansas City. Were you there to, at that one? I didn't make it to the two thousand eight. I was at the two thousand ten in Columbus, yeah. Ohio, and that was uh, that was the first one I'd ever competed in, and got lucky enough and won the won my first world championship, that world howling championship yeah. there. And uh, man, I, I tell you what, that was that was an experience because I honestly I just went there basically. Cause I mean I've been predator hunting since I was a kid. I mean I started out with a little Coleman flashlight, with the you know basically looked like the early uh, Fox Pros. Yeah. Uh, and go out there with a the white light. We would tape. Uh, I tape a red uh, bag over the end of it to get the red light, and had little tapes. I borrowed my sister's tape player. Would go out there and call foxes and stuff. We didn't really have a lot of coyotes back then in the eighties, and uh, um, that's how I started out. And just grow from there. And so when I heard the uh, World Predator Collin Championship was going to be in Ohio, I was like, man, that's only going to be like five hours away. So yeah. I loaded up and thought I'd compete. And honestly, didn't think I even had a, a chance. And ended up getting some diaphragms from Tory. And uh, you know how it all went down. You were there. You won the yeah. overall that year. Yeah. And I won the Highland Championship. And, uh, I mean, it was it was unreal. And since then it's it's just really taken off like it was a it was a good experience and i went up there with no hopes and end up winning the world championship so man that was it a was good, that was a good year for everybody uh it was bitter, it, was. it was bittersweet i don't know if you remember you know my grandpa died i do i remember that I, before i won that deal i was i remember that i know it was tough on you man it, i really yeah. 
that sucked, but I mean, it was, I remember, I remember when you, uh, got up after you accepted your award or whatever and talking about, I mean, that was, that was good stuff. I mean, I know you dedicated it to your grandpa and yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not to do that after, answer. yeah, I mean, to do that after, uh, going through that, I mean, that, that showed a lot. I got lucky. I'll, I mean, I'll admit, I don't, I wish, I wish there was some way that I could say, well, the judges knew it was me and just gave it to me because I got lucky. I, you know, I, I tell everybody and I don't, you know, I don't throw the world championship deal around much because I only got in one and, or I got in two, I guess. And, and, uh, I wasn't even entered in that thing when I went and Al and, uh, um, gosh, I can't even remember that kid from Fox Pro's name right now. It slipped my... Duff Statler. Yeah, Duff Statler entered me in it. And I was like, yep. <laughs> I was like, all right, you know, I said, what do you want me to do? And he's like, man, you got to do that awesome cat sound you make and yada, yada. And so I just, I got lucky that whole deal. And I, you know, I, it was just my day. I don't, I've, I've said it a hundred times and I'll say it again. I never could win another one, even if I tried, but man, that was a good day for you guys. It was a good day. It was a, if people knew me and you were standing really at the start of the, uh, not a lunch line, but we were started at the line of a history line. I mean, we really were. I mean, just, yeah. just think back. I mean, those were simpler times. I know everybody like, you know, our parents tell us about simpler times in the pre and, you know, in life, in the predator hunting industry, those were simpler times. I mean, oh, it, it's God. crazy. The politics that have been involved since then and how it's grown and, you know, predator hunting was just really kind of getting kicked off back then. Uh, yeah. You know, it was, you know, a lot of people were doing it, but it hasn't taken the explosion it has in the last, you know, five to five to seven years. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it's crazy to see how it's grown since then. Cause I know they paired it with the, uh, the deer expo up in Columbus and it was hard getting people to come over. It was nobody really cared about killing coyotes now. Yeah shoot it's all over facebook i mean that's all you see everybody everybody wants yeah. to be a coyote hunter now and it, it's it's crazy how it's grown and i'm i'm excited we kind of got in on the ground floor of that yeah you know i it, it it sucks in a way because me and you've seen a lot of good people go coming right and we've seen right. a lot of good companies like hunter specialties you know you used to i remember you used to be able to I'd go, I'd sit at a buyer's table at Cabela's and the, or Bass Pro, you know, they were, had a, always, they always had a tough set of buyers and they'd look at me and like, Kreiner, you're always saying, Hey, you know, you got the best library in the industry. Why are you saying that? Just cause it's your alls. And I said, Hey, Google it, you know, and man, they would just start writing orders because I mean, it was true. And then now, you know, gosh, I hate to say it, but you know, 80% of these predator hunters on Facebook or any digital platform, really, unless they've had exposure don't even know that brand anymore you know right yeah it brothers, is burning brothers you know i mean i mean that's how i started out the old johnny stewart uh cassette tapes the burning brother cassette tapes i mean that's i think i think that's how most of your you know guys have been into it a long time i mean that's how we all started out with playing the old cassette tapes i mean i Unfortunately, I wasn't able to afford one of the actual callers with the speakers. I just had a little tape player, and I went out and set out. And man, I was calling stuff in. So I mean, that's, that's what how, it. That's you know, you make it work. It is. I mean, when you go do that, and you're using, you're using like a Coleman flashlight with a, <laughs> a red paper bag taped over the end of it, and you're killing stuff. Like, you know, that makes you really appreciate. Now, I mean, which everybody knows, I'm I'm out in Virginia. And luckily, we have a night season. So I've switched to all thermal now and I have, yep. you know, I have good thermal equipment. I mean, it makes you really appreciate that stuff. A lot of these new guys are getting into it and they start out with that. I'm like, man, you guys, you never lived hard. You never lived hard. And, and, and I ain't meaning this bad, but no, I in mean, today's age, you can start a Facebook page and this is kind of my soapbox <laughs> I jump on. You can start a Facebook page and say you're a TV guy in five seconds now. And go buy you ten thousand likes if you got any money, and somebody's gonna send you a free thermal scope, you know? Right. Yeah. It's... And, I mean, it's just holy. And there's some, there's some freaking killers. There's some freaking killers now using thermal. I mean, I think Bowman and them boys, they they're badasses with thermal, right? Do they use thermal? Oh man, yeah, for sure. Uh, Benton Bowman, uh, Kyle. Kirk.
Rickenberger, Jamie Terry. I mean, yeah. I'll give credit to all those guys. I mean, they're my buddies. They're my close personal friends. I yeah. mean, we we have dinner together all the time. I mean, they come up to the house and stuff. Those guys, um, the, the way I met them, uh, local contests, I'm sure you know how all that works. Local contests, they live about two and a half, three hours away from me. So we had our local contest out here in Southwest Virginia. They had their local contest out in Central Virginia. And, uh, I mean, I was winning almost all the local contests here, you know, pretty much dominating all this stuff. And they were dominating out there. Well, those guys, they picked up night vision and thermal. Well, they started coming into my ground. And, I mean, they were, I was, in no other words, they were whooping my ass. So I was like, <laughs> can't beat them, join them. So uh, <laughs> I, hunted, I hunted with Benton one time with thermal and night vision. And I was sold. I didn't know what I was missing. And uh, yeah. those guys, I mean, they – they, I was lucky enough to have them to, uh, you know, show me their equipment and everything. And I was like, man, that, that's kind of the future of what's, what's coming. I mean, and, uh, we, we became great friends and I mean, they're, they're good, solid guys. I mean, I can't, can't say enough about them. I mean, they, they really are good guys. And, you know, I went, you know, and, now uh, we're all partnered up with Fox Pro. Every time we go hunting, you know, it's kind of a conflict because, yeah. We were with another company, and they were with Fox Pro, so I mean, we we had all that. But now, shoot, it's it's game on. Yeah, there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of black tape. There's a lot of black tape in this industry, and I freaking hate it because I'm the guy that's always cutting and trying to go through it, you know. And uh, and sometimes I rub people wrong that way, and I don't ever. I, well, I guess I don't mean to. I guess I do it. So, you know, I just. I like the thermal deal. Everything's stepping up the game. Same thing with electronics. Same thing with sound libraries. But the thing about thermal, I, I bought fifteen thousand dollars worth of thermal. And three days later, you want to talk about black tape in the business? Three days later, a company approached me and asked me if I'd help them forefront a light. Well, <laughs> three days after I bought fifteen thousand dollars worth of thermal, I had to sell it all. You know, and uh, I never. I remember when I bought my thermal, you know, some of the guys, uh, like on the night crew and stuff, you know, they're like, oh, Kreiner, this, blah, blah, blah. And, man, I was just wanting to play with thermal. I wasn't really even planning on filming much with it, you know. And, right. Uh, I had to I had to shelf it, which I sold it, but I don't know. I'm kind of a – I mean, it's a tool, and, and that's the thing about it. It's a tool, man. I mean yeah. – and a lot of people, they they always, uh, you know, we were winning a lot of contests and stuff. We were catching a lot of flack because everyone had lights and stuff. I mean, it is a valuable tool, and it's basically, I mean, look at it. Like, I mean, you're hunting with a flintlock muzzleloader compared to a 7 Mag Rim 700 bow action rifle. I mean, what are you going to kill more with? I mean, that's the thing. Yeah. And in certain places, it, it, a lot of it just depends on the – you know, how educated coyotes are, but out here in the East, you know, we just got back from a trip in Texas and New Mexico and man, when we pull onto a place there, like we may be hunting a 10, 15,000 acre ranch out here in the East. Like if you get a 200 acre farm, you're doing good. And it may be 15 miles down the road to your next spot. And there's so many people hunting around. I think just the education of the coyotes, I mean, Coyotes come to the same calls. It doesn't matter where you're at in the United States. But I think yeah. just uh, how educated and how many hunters you have on a certain, you know, tract of land or just in a certain area. And, and it just got to the point where coyotes, like if you hit them with a light, they would be coming in. You you would turn that light on and boom, they would turn around and head for the mountains. I mean, it just got to that point. I mean, you kind of upgrade or, you know, you're not going to kill anything. Yeah, so. you know, I – uh this light I'm using right now with optical dynamics, it's a white freaking light and I've hunted everywhere with it and I ain't had nothing run from it. It's the damnedest thing I ever seen. I don't know what. That's pretty good. I mean, I, I hunted with lights for 25 years. I mean, I, we, we definitely kill stuff, but I took, it, you, I took it to Northern Colorado and them guys are like, man, you ain't shining that. I'm like, well, I want it to be good. You know, I need to know if this thing's a real deal. And, I don't know, man. It's it's a weird white light, but I like thermal too. I, I, I mean, and actually, I, I'm getting ready. I'm talking to a thermal company right now. I think we're getting ready to. We're not gonna uh, 
you know, Optical Dynamics is obviously our go-to light. I mean, and not right. just because they sponsor me, but because I helped them forefront. I mean, it's a good light. and We've got everything. We're kind of like you guys. We've got everything fine-tuned right now where we don't have to have no BS on our show. You know, nobody's giving us any money to promote crap, you know. And, that, you know, that's that's the thing. You use, you use what works. I mean, yeah. and that, there's no BS. You're not just taking money just for the sake of taking money. You use what works and you know, as long as you're doing that, people can see it. Yeah, a guy asked me the other day, he's like, and I guess this will be a shameless plug for TacticalPredatorHunter.com, your source for dog soldier approved gear. But I was talking to a guy about retail the other day, and he was like, hey, how do you handle your returns and your exchanges and yada, yada, yada? I'm like, what returns? He's like, well, when stuff breaks down or people don't use it, I'm like, first of all, this ain't Walmart. And second of all, if you fine tune your store, you don't have no returns, man. Right, and it—I mean, it's an amazing, it's a, an amazing deal. Uh, but kind of bombing out on the subject before before I forget to ask you, you, you deal with pressure probably more so than any of us. Out of all my buddies, you probably handle pressure or deal with pressure more so than a lot of people I hunt with. When you're out there in Virginia, how in the—I mean, what is when you you think you're hunting pressured coyotes? What's your approach? I mean, how do you handle it? Uh, the biggest thing is honestly the diaphragms. I think that's where that comes into play. Um, a lot of guys, you know, I mean, a lot of guys are using them now, but the thing is no one sounds the same. And I think that's what really helps. Uh, I think you're throwing them sounds out there and, and I've said it from day one, Tori will say the same thing. Uh, you know, it's the most realistic sound you can sound out there. And I honestly think it a lot most times it beats running it through an electronic collar. There's something to me I can tell the difference between an electronic collar and a uh, any collar. I mean, I'm not talking about Fox Pro, I could take Flex Tone or anything. I think running a sound through a speaker, it it has a different sound. I mean, oh yeah, definitely. And I think the diaphragms have really helped. Um, I know a lot of my buddies. I've converted them to them and. They've said, you know, we've been out here running running a call and we can't kill anything. As soon as they get a diaphragm, they're like, man, we can go out and locate. So like they used to use sirens. They used to use group howls and all this, and they wouldn't hear anything. As soon as they switched over to diaphragms, they would get coyotes to howl back at them. So I think that has been my biggest thing uh, dealing with the pressure code is just give them a sound they haven't heard, something new, and uh, – that's probably been probably been my biggest asset um, out here, especially with the explosion of uh, new predator hunters. But now, as, as MFK grows, a lot of people get diaphragm calls. I mean, yeah. it, you know, it, it, it's good and it's bad. But I mean, it, you know, the good thing about that is no no two people will ever sound the same on the yeah. diaphragm, and I like that about it. Uh, That's why uh, I started. I don't promote them much. I guess I got one in my hand right now but i started turning calls man I'm right making, i'm making these custom acrylic calls and and i know when you're watching this back later you can probably see them i might have sent you a picture the other day but you know that's why i made these calls you know i mean there's so many dog soldier hand calls in in circulation now and there's the good you know the good thing about the the diaphragms like you say is like there's so many dog soldier hand calls in circulation and now i'm building custom acrylic hand calls you know what what can we really differentiate or separate people apart with in the diaphragms like you said i mean it's a diaphragm just like a, a diaphragm in your body every one of them's different i mean they're built the same but everybody the pressure's different the airflow's different and, and no, no sound is ever going to be alike just i mean you can tell when well, you it's just like talking to you know? yeah i mean it's just like talking to your buddy i mean he, you don't have to even look at the phone. As soon as somebody answers a phone call, I can usually recognize their voice, who it is. And that's the exact oh, yeah. same way with someone using a diaphragm. I mean, everyone has their own tone. And, you know, I think that. I can uh, tell Tori. I can tell Tori. It don't matter what he's howling with. I can tell when it's him, you know. Um, oh, yeah. Me and him are night and day different. We've talked about that from day one. Like, mine and his howls are totally different. I mean, they both. You know, I think they both sound really good, but we have two totally different styles of howling. We have two totally different styles of barking, two totally different styles of pup distress. You know, and I like that fact because we can combine those on these group howls. Like we have uh, MFK Coyote Duet, 
yeah. uh, available for the e-calls. And that's me and Tori howling together. And I think the difference there, that that is probably our number one sound that we produce. And, yeah. you know, you can distinctly tell it's two different howls. And, I mean, you can tell the difference when you're out there hunting. I mean, you, I know you've hunted all yeah. over the country. And you can tell the difference between an old male, a female, a pup house and stuff. And I think, you know, coyotes can tell that difference too. And then I think it, it's a, it's a good thing having the diaphragms in your pocket and uh, hand calls. I mean, throwing those out there. I mean, I've been a, you know, a lot of people, um, you know, they, they uh, associate uh, Tori and I with diaphragms, but I mean, we're very proficient with hand calls too. I mean, I love hand calls. I mean, they're, especially for distress sound, coaxer sound, rabbit sounds, and stuff like that. I mean, there's not a thing wrong with them at all. So. Well, tell me, I've got a question for you. Are you as aggressive with your coyotes as Tori is? He is? Uh, not quite as aggressive as Tori. Um, I still get pretty aggressive. Uh, I think for Tori's, uh, the difference between his is mine is my terrain is more rolling farmland, uh, big timber where his is more i mean i, I know you've hunted with they, yeah. that a show just aired down there on uh sportsman channel yeah. with you guys yeah. and that was a great show by the way Thank i enjoyed you. it yes yeah, uh very good show You'll have to yeah i mean next year and do that man it's yeah definitely i mean it, like i said it, the 12 hour drive that, that makes it tough getting down there on time but i i definitely love all the shows but i think the terrain difference a little bit just because i night hunt predominantly here and where he day hunts i mean i love going out there but i mean a lot of times when we set up on coyotes and you know that down there i mean you're probably not 100 yards from these coyotes before you even start calling i mean that's crazy to me here because at night we'll set up in a wide open field in a tr with a tripod and i still get very aggressive i, I run vocals 90 percent of the time all year long yeah, I'm a too. big vocals guy. Me I mean, I, I'm not a huge distress playing guy, and uh, it works for me all year long. I mean, you have to transition the type of vocals you use, yeah. but I, I still run vocals 90% of the time on all stands. Okay, well, let's let's start something right here then, or let's start all another right. topic. If you're using vocals 90% of the year, or 98% of the time, or 90% of the time, and you, you just said you transition your vocals through different types of gear. So take us take us through a walk in the, the hunting season with Jason Grossclose. So instead of, you don't have to give us a bio lesson or anything, but just let's say, um, well, I know for a fact a key time is January through March. What is your, what is your typical from, let, let's just say, August to, you know, November? And then December, January, and February. How how do you transition? What sounds are you using? Um, the biggest difference I do there is I don't rely as much on locating from the December, January through March as I do from the August through through basically October. A lot of times I I slow up around October through November just because deer season is pretty big out here, and a lot of my properties that I hunt. A lot of the farm, uh, a lot of the guys, I mean, they're big into deer hunting and they don't want you to run their deer off and stuff. So I, I don't hunt a lot that time of year. I'll hunt my own properties and stuff like that. But I'll run it through August through October. Locating is number one for me because I'll go out and I, I'll rarely hunt a spot unless I absolutely have heard coyotes there. Um, basically just a few lone house, uh, then I'll start out with some just pup whines, pup chatters, and all that, and run that. And that's that's basically all I do and have really good luck with that. Later on in the year, if I pull up to a spot, say January, February, whatever, I don't rely on locating that much at all. If, if I don't hear coyotes and I know it's a good spot, I'll continue to call that spot. I will maybe start out with a little bit of distress. Then... I'll go into some howls. I may get aggressive with some howls, especially with the mating season. I think that, you know, you can uh, trigger some of that uh, territorial um, uh, instincts with the coyotes. So uh, that's more what I'll do. I won't run quite as much pup stress. I'll still throw in like the female whimpers, whines, and all that on the diaphragms and mix it with the stuff we have on our e-calls too. And, uh, but the biggest thing I tell people, they're like, man, 
I went out, you know, which I've had a couple guys email or message me in the last few days are like, man, I think the Coyotes have left my area. Like, I've been out locating, and, you know, I just don't hear them. Like, they're just not as vocal this time of year. Yeah. I mean, it, it just happens. The Coyotes are still there, but they're just not as vocal as they're going to be in August and September. Because, I mean, I can go out and I can lo- locate, you know, 10, 15 packs a night if I drive all night. Now, I'd be lucky to hear two or three groups. But the Coyotes are still there. It's not like they disappeared and, you know, went to Hawaii like Tori is right now, by the way, <laughs> sitting on the beach in Hawaii. Those Coyotes didn't take a vacation to Hawaii. They are still there. They're just not howling. <laughs> yeah, <he's... laughs> I called him this morning. I called him this morning. He's like, what's up? My mic. Like, okay. So, I seen Facebook, obviously. <laughs> he's like, yeah, you effers started at 3 a.m. this morning. I'm in damn Hawaii, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I was like, I was like, so this is where I said, okay, so I guess this is where I step in here, Tori, and just ask you, what's the deal? Because, I mean, you guys have been sponsoring Dog Soldier for so long, and we would hunt together probably if you didn't hunt or sponsor Dog Soldier. I mean, oh, yeah, we I have mean... cut the black tape. We have been so freaking successful at cutting the black tape and getting away with murder. yeah friends are friends yeah. no matter what co- company and, uh, you use, so. and i was like but you know in the past and nothing personally against mike dylan or fox pro or anything like that but in the past you know it's hard to let your fox pro guys associate with other companies because it just causes it just causes stuff well and so i was asked tori i was like uh so what what's going on and he told me so i guess with that being said we, I, I, we gave enough guys some info in the last 31 minutes to kill any coyote in the country. Right. So let's get down to the dirt. Let's get, <laughs> let's get down to the stuff you're like, you were probably sweating when I texted you and asked you guys if you wanted to be on a podcast. You're like, oh man, Kreiner. So the announcement comes out and Steve Kreiner automatically starts announcing he's going to do a podcast. But I will admit... In a graceful manner, I wasn't going to do it on this subject without you guys here because, I, you know what, I rocked the boat. You know, Les Johnson's pissed at me and Al was mad at me for a little bit. And I've, I've made some guys mad over this podcast deal and it wasn't nothing. It, the problem with this podcast is we're all buddies. we all known each other for years, but when you start, it ain't my fault they weren't here to defend their self. <laughs> you right. know, I asked them to be here. So anyway, with that being said... um. You know, MFK, we talked about grassroots, working hard, working your butt off, and and not going to product promote too much, you know, because there is black tape there, and, you know, obviously I make an electronic call with flex tone. But, you know, Fox Pros, I remember when, uh, you know, Steve and Mike, their dad was was doing everything, and, and uh you know, so they're grassroots, you know, down to earth. They eat, breathe, and sleep, Fox Pro. Um, so just tell us, I guess, because there's going to be a lot of people watching this because they're going to want to hear it straight from the horse's mouth. What what does the – I mean, because as a business person, I read it, and I could tell exactly what was going on. I just needed to verify it. But what what's the deal? What's the relationship? What's going on there with you and Fox Pro? Well, I mean – Everybody knows we were with Icatech, and we just saw the company going in a direction that wasn't going to be positive for our customers. I mean, that's about as uh, basic as I can uh, as I can put it. You know, without getting into a lot of the you know you know behind the scenes business terms, and a lot of people you, don't you realize how want. much behind. Yeah, I'm sure <laughs> a lot of people don't realize all the behind the scenes stuff that takes place that no one sees on Facebook and uh, or any social media, and you know that kind of stuff. We our first and foremost, like we talked earlier, is loyalty, and you know we realize where we came from and. If we didn't have our customers, we would be no one. I mean, Tori started out making diaphragm calls on his table and sell them in little Ziploc bags with a business card in them. And to this day, Tori still makes every single call handmade on on his kitchen table. Every single one. Every call that anyone receives, they come from Tori's kitchen table. He makes them right there. And that kind of quality will never you know, be mass or never be mass produced. And 
you know, I just held the up whole a, deal is is I, their customers. They appreciate that, I think, yeah. and that's what. And we and we want to take care of them. And we we just saw the the past business that we were in or relationship we have with Argotech. We just saw it going in a way where it wasn't beneficial to our customers, yeah. and that is our first and foremost thing. And I think this deal with Fox Pro is going to be very beneficial to uh, both companies as well as extremely beneficial to our customers because yeah. i mean as you know fox pro controls the e-call market a huge percentage you know yeah. we've been we've been approached for a long time about people how, hey if, if i had a nickel for every message i had hey how do i get those mfk sounds on my fox pro oh yeah you know like like man i'm sorry they're encrypted for icotech you know you ought to be on the other end of that deal man you you don't want to know how many people want to meet it how do i get mfk sounds on your game call Kreiner. <laughs> right oh i mean God. it is what it is and you know a lot of people have you know said uh you know why don't they just make them mp3s and uh, release them to everybody well you know it's more of a loyalty thing you know if a company is going to stand behind us we want to be loyal to them yeah, and absolutely. you know that that's that's where we stand on that loyalty is their number one thing and you know if we don't make a dime like we all have day jobs and it's not you know, Tory, he, he can mount deer all day long, <laughs> but yeah. I mean, he doesn't have a lot of time for that anymore. I mean, I'm born for a living, but you know, loyalty is our number one thing. If we, we're not trying to get rich in this business. I mean, it is what it is. We love what we do. And, you know, I, I think that's, that's the biggest thing. And, uh, you know, with Fox pro, you know, they've, uh, they've been really supportive, uh, of us in this deal and gave us a lot of freedom and uh you know we we we're really excited about the relationship we're building with them yeah you know i'm excited for you guys too it's obviously going to take you guys to another level and uh you know when it comes down to it i mean i i mean i kind of run my mouth a little bit but i am addicted to small business I, I love, you know, a while ago... Oh, I, I am, to, too. It's the heart of America. I mean, when, it really is. When you was talking about handmade calls a while ago, I was holding up my custom acrylic calls and pointing at them and making goofy faces. You know, I just... Gosh dang. You, you know, I, I love small business. Most of all, I love competition. I love the word market share, or the two words market share. And a lot of people don't understand it. And, you know, one thing, I, I, I really stay out of the whole call wars that, that happen, you know, that... I mean, we all know that some people get in every freaking day of their life. Because, no, it you know, is. <laughs> and I just, I stay out of that kind of crap. But, you know, I do accidentally let loose and voice my opinions on other stuff, too. And it's, you know, it, it gets me in trouble. Especially since I do this for a living. And this is like, <sighs> I, I wish I had a farm. <laughs> oh, it is, I mean, it is. I'll, I'll get, you know, I'll get a little uh, fired up every now and then. But luckily, uh you know, since day one, Tori and I, like, we just, we tell it like it is. Yeah. And luckily, I mean, we're buddies, so that way, I mean, hopefully he won't fire me, maybe. I don't know. Hey, Tori, don't fire me, by the way, for whatever it Hey, says. I'm looking at the camera right now. Tori, if you fire Jason, I'm going to whoop your ass. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> tell him that shit. I'm going to, I'm going to break, look at this. You want to go to the gun show? That thing right there. I'm holding up my Hey, bicycle. if he has a... Hey, if he hasn't fired Dave already, I think I'm good to go. But, <laughs> no, man. I mean, the way we are, I mean, it's a buddy thing. I mean, hell, yeah. you can say anything. I don't care if you're right or wrong between any of us three. We're going to stick. We got each other's back. I mean, yeah. there's times, you know, we may not all agree on the same thing, but, man, I don't care. I'm I'm 100% with you. I mean, I got your back whether you're right or wrong. And Yeah, you know, you know that's, that's why we all got along so good with the relationship we have between MFK and Dog Soldier. It's like from right. the start, we're cutting black tape right out of the gate and – you know, I told yeah, we're buddies. I, I mean, like, hey, even out know. in Waco, out there, you know, we all hung out and at the championship. That's I think when we all first met. I mean, you know, we're buddies first, and then that's, business that's when starts, uh, you know? that's when uh, that's when Schwatch pooped on. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't gonna bring that up, but yeah, that I was. was yeah. Hey, I'll bring it up. It's my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Sheesh, I told the cameraman the other day, I was like, man, I had to buy a recliner one time in a hotel room because I had a cameraman poop all over the place. I'm buying this, too. <laughs> Shit, man, that, uh, was, that, that was bad. Man. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> 
the the times we've had i mean it's just so good and it's so good to share them with buddy so really to outline and i won't we won't have to beat in the dirt but to outline the fox pro deal pretty much you guys are your sound library and sound packs are proprietary to fox pro uh callers right now and you will be offering fox pro callers with mfk sounds on them Right, yeah, we'll we'll be an official dealer for Fox Pro. We'll be offering an MFK edition Fox Pro. That will be you can uh, buy them loaded with certain sound packs. We haven't worked out all the deals. I mean, like I said, we're still in the process and transition everything over. But you'll be able to buy Fox Pro calls loaded with MFK sounds directly from us at MFK. And uh, for the guys that already own Fox Pros, they'll be able to come to our website and purchase the sounds uh, yeah. uh, individually or our entire library or sound yeah. bundles, uh, however that's going to work out once we get it, once we get all the details figured out. Um, my has been on the computer here for the last day or so trying to get everything transitioned over. And yeah. um, As everybody knows, I'm just the computer guy here at MFK and uh, – I have zero experience with computers since day one, and I'm not say. real sure how I I got conned into being the computer guy at MFK. Dude. But uh, Tori and I still joke about that every day. You're like, editing. You, uh, you're editing sick, man. Are you still oh, doing that? <laughs> yeah, you're you're too kind. Of, I mean, I, I honestly, the way I the way I learned to edit, I bought an editing program and just started hitting buttons and watching YouTube videos on how to use this thing. I mean it. Uh. I can't even we Tori and I were actually joking about this earlier today when we were talking about where we started and where it is today. Yeah. I can't I personally can't even watch our first MFK episode. <laughs> it, it, I, I, I cringe. I really do. When I watch these videos and see like the stuff I do on there, I'm like, Oh my god, that's so corny and cheesy but you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of funny. Like when we're older and looking back, I mean, if YouTube is even still around, then we'll watch, watch that stuff. And those will probably be my favorite episodes. Yeah. Um, I know Tori, Dave and I, we used to do a round table discussion. I mean, it was uh, the first one we did. We were down in Arkansas on a fishing <laughs> trip and this is no lie. And Tori and Dave, I'm sure they're going to give me shit for saying this, but it was, this is no shit. It was 114 degrees. It's at the <laughs> Arkansas state record. And we were outside on a porch off of Tori's camp doing this uh, round table discussion. I was so hot. I, I sit there and had a rag, like wiping my, the sweat off my face. And we're trying to talk about Kyrie. I'm like, I'm like, fellas, I was like, I don't think this is going to work. <laughs> I mean, it's hilarious to go back and watch the early ones. But, the stuff you, know, you got to go through to be a movie star. It is. I mean, we, we learn every day. I mean, and I'm still learning stuff every day. I learn stuff about editing. I learn stuff about the business. I learn stuff about calling. I learn stuff about hunting, you know. The, the day you stop learning is the day you need to just hang it up or, you know, you're going to fall behind the game. I mean, yeah. you need to – you need, you need to keep up with the times, I think. And I think a lot of people don't realize that. They get complacent and uh, just settle for where they're at. And I think you just need to keep continuously growing every day. And we've tried to do that. And, you know, I think we've we've been fairly successful in doing that. Man, I tell you what, it's such a – holy cow, man. It's such a, it's such a different business now than it was – such a different business than it was when we first started. You know, I just – It is. I, I, I can't even believe what Facebook – and I, I know Facebook's a great tool for marketing. It allows companies to be able to do things that they wouldn't have normally done. It's great for small business. I mean, I, I was talking to a guy earlier. I, I know of an entity that makes $4 million a year off of, of a YouTube. Right. And, you know, I, I'm just telling you right now, it, it plain and simple, Facebook is good for small business. But it also can freaking cut your face off in two seconds because the minute somebody and, and I'll admit it, so you know I make custom tobacco pipes, you know it, and a lot of people right, see yeah. It. So yeah, pipes and leather months, works and all that. You know, six months ago, I didn't even I wasn't a pipe maker, but in six months, and I've I've not really done much on Facebook, but in six months. I'm a pretty well-known pipe maker on Instagram because I accidentally was good at it. And social media allowed me to sell 40-some pipes in the year 2017. And 
I wouldn't have been able to do it without Facebook. But on the other hand, just think all the other pipe makers that have worked through the ranks and busted their balls for years and years and years to, to be who they are. And then people just start popping up and are, are at the same level over, seem like overnight, you know, uh, right. I'm, I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a phenomenon in the pipe making world right now. It's kind of weird. I'm, I'm accidentally good at it, but it, it makes our job hard. MFK, you know, making hand calls. We, there's several companies that pop up and think, you know, I, I was making diaphragms once. I made a set for HS, and they did pretty good at Storebox in 2009 and 2010. But, you know, when I left HS, I wanted to make my own. Well, I couldn't make it as good as I wanted it. You know, it's plain and simple. I couldn't. But but if I could, I could have been a diaphragm maker, you know, overnight. Right. And Tori's worked years and years and years to pull this off. Well, I, you know, it's just a real touchy subject because when I, I've been on TV now for – over 12 years and I paid my dues and I've worked hard and I've done all the people can start a Facebook page tomorrow and a damn YouTube channel and they're rocking man it is it, I mean it's, it's crazy amazing. I mean it's a, and, it they're, is. and they're better than we are at editing and all this other crap you know they got cooler toys they got the kids nowadays are so educated and their, their motor skills are so tremendously good I mean they're taking good pictures they're taking good video they're editing good video I mean, any high school kid can put a TV sh show together really right now if he's if he's good at it, you know, and it's just weird. I think that's the thing. I mean, and that's one thing we've, we've fucking dealt with from uh, day one. Our, my editing, because like I said, I taught myself I am not a, I didn't go to school for any of this. I mean, I, I'm a cattle farmer. I mean, that's what I do for the day in and day out, and I throw these videos together. But I think... I think people can see through a lot of that stuff. They like content, you know? Yeah, they I mean, like it. It's a lot good. of these hunting shows, I mean, it's all about, you know, pretty shots and, and all this stuff. And I mean, and I think you need that. And I mean, you know, we were one of the first people, especially on YouTube, like in the predator hunt stuff, using a drone. I mean, I, we bought a drone in like 2012. Now a lot of people use them, you know? It's one of those things. And, you know, that stuff's really cool. But I think in the end, I think what really sets the the solid companies out is content. People want to see action. I mean, you can show pretty shots that all howling, day long. The howling and the coyotes howling and all the content. Right. You guys. And you're editing. Don't cut yourself short. I mean, yeah, when you first started, you was just learning. But now it's like I watched one uh, Clay Reed the other day. You guys with Clay Reed. And it was, you mean Cooter Brown? Yeah. That, so <laughs> it, it was solid, man. It was like concrete. It was good stuff. And, and I – uh. And I, I was thinking to myself, you know what, if this TV deal ever goes away from me, I'm going to be in the same boat because I have tacticalpredatorhunter.com. I sell all the stuff I use, and it's a great business, and I want to maintain that business, and I want to keep that business. My, right. my dream is to sell people good, solid products, good brands, and keep making my pipes and leather and just keep on rolling, you know what I mean? And, and that's uh, what you do, I mean, yeah. and people know, I mean, people see that. I mean, if you got a good quality product, and like I said, I know your pipe business and leather making business, like, you know, I've been keeping up with you on Facebook and everything, and you're doing great with that. And it's, you know, people realize that, and, um, you know, people want a part of it. So. Yeah, you know, it's it's just a, it's just amazing how it's, and, and you know, Dog Soldier, when we first started Dog Soldier, you know, we wanted to have the best shots, and, and now I've kind of, I what they call, what I call, uh, uh, I kind of backslided a little bit. Used to, I really wanted everything to look good. I wanted cool shots, and I still want that. Oh yeah. And now I'm, I'm more, you know, like people are clicking on the dog soldier to watch the dog soldier kill coyotes, not see a slider shot of my foot going across the mud puddle. You know, even though we, we still do that, but. I mean, used to, we really focused on having a great produced show that's, and Bill does phenomenal with the work. Oh, thing. Bill's, Bill's one of the best out there. I mean, I, oh, I had mentioned him now. I mean, Bill Jackson, I mean, your guys show, I, I mean, honestly, I think it's the best predator hunting show out there and that has ever been out there. And, uh, I mean, the graphics, everything is really good. I like how you guys put the show together and, uh, that that's my downfall is I don't have that talent on the editing end and Me the either. whole uh, artistic end and all that. I mean, Me I told Tori from day one, I was like, man, I'll do this, but 
<laughs> you're gonna have to bear with me. <laughs> I mean, it's gonna be. It's you're gonna, gonna have to bear out. with me till your kid turns nine and can do it better than me. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And honestly, man, there's there's some of these shows out there. That some of these younger guys are putting out. I mean, the uh, editing and the artistic ability is just phenomenal. I I just yeah. do not have that talent. I'm I'm a farmer and a coyote killer. I mean, that's about as far as it goes. I, but I mean, the, I know what I like to see, and I put the videos yeah. together the way I like to see it. Yeah. And I think a lot of guys pr- appreciate that because, you know, a lot of these guys that are editors, they're not hunters as well, well yeah. you know, and they're all about the artistic stuff. I'm a hunter. I like to see stuff die. I like to see coyotes hit the ground. You know, I may show a lot of gory shots. I know we've gotten a lot of criticism over uh, the last few years about showing, the, you know, too much uh, gory stuff, too much uh, blood and all this. But, man, that's what real hunters want to see yeah. and you know we catch a lot of flack as well as you do from the antis and all that but i mean it is what it is i mean you know well, take it or leave it you know you can like us or hate us we you know we'll, we'll still I, do what I we're like gonna do me. i like it because i see your style in every episode and i share a lot of them episodes too you know i i think right i dig them and and uh you know i see your style in every episode and i and it's like man it's cool because i'm like you know, everybody thinks, not everybody, but a lot of people think if you're on TV, you're some kind of celebrity, and that is not the case. I'm just a normal guy, and I and I love it when I'm like see your video, and I'm like, hey, I know that guy. You know, I put that, I, I know that guy that put that together because it, you guys got it rocking. I, I I'll admit, you know, the YouTube uh, predator hunting on YouTube um, changed the day you guys. I remember to the freaking day almost when you guys. It was 2012. Let's see here. Yeah, 2000. Hold on. 12. 2011, maybe. Maybe I don't have it pinned down. Uh, but I, rem- I remember um, this one jack leg. I, well, I had said, uh, you remember when I announced Dog Soldier I was going to be an online show? You right. That? And then yep. that, that other jack leg said he was going to have the best predator show ever online like two days after i said that <laughs> yeah and i was I like <laughs> i was like fine i'll just go to the sportsman channel and play if i can't play with you big dog <laughs> so i went to the sportsman channel and let him have online and i don't think he lasted nine episodes but s- shortly after that you guys started your your run on youtube and holy crap i remember watching the first episode and them foxes just i was like how in the hell are these guys pulling this off in the timber? You know, it's just, it was just amazing to me. And I, I loved every bit of it. I still love it, man. I watch it all the time. I dig it. I dig it. Oh, it's, it's fun. I mean, I enjoy it. I mean, Tori, I mean, I don't get to get down and hunt with him as much as, uh, as I like. And when he sends me SD cards full of hunts and that's the thing about this year, I mean, I think we're, I'm getting ready to air tomorrow, episode 21 or 22 this season it's only january 1st i mean we have so much footage i mean we could run 40 episodes and still have episodes you know more for next year but uh you know the time is so limited getting i mean it takes time to do this stuff and uh you know when i get those sd cards and popping them in it's just like i'm sitting there living that hunt again watching it raw i mean it's it's a lot of fun so i get to kind of live out those hunts uh even the ones i'm not on uh get to live them out while they're there and we're on the same page they tory knows my style of editing and he films like that i mean i think that's a big key into getting uh, a good show is the guy filming the guy hosting and the guy editing having a really good relationship because everybody knows what they want we got carrie wayne uh carrie weaver i mean i i can't say enough about that guy he is uh he's been heart and soul in mfk since day one he's oh, our man, camera he's guy i mean carrie wayne is as good as they come uh love that guy he's one of my great friends and uh he knows what i want when i'm filming and uh you know, he, he took a new job. He's not been able to uh, film as much or be on as uh, many of the new episodes of MFK as we'd like. But uh, that guy right there, he's solid. So, yeah, he's good uh, stuff. He's good stuff. Yeah, um, he's a good dude. I know you met him. Dayton, too. Yeah, I mean, Dayton, yeah, he's learning. Awesome. <laughs> we're, we're, trying to, we're trying to get Dayton behind the camera more, but uh, yeah. 
you can only see him behind that little cloud of smoke he's oh, behind. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you never get a clear picture of him because there's a little cloud of smoke yeah. behind, in front of his face. He's awesome. So, <laughs> your YouTube channel, your link is youtube.com forward slash MFK Game Calls. Is that what it is? Yes, okay. that's correct. So, for everybody listening on iTunes or SoundCloud or watching this on YouTube, MFK. <laughs> You can find them at www.youtube.com forward slash MFK Game Calls. And their website's www.mfkgamecalls.com because they got all kinds of cool diaphragms, effective diaphragms. And if you want to learn how to use them, just go to their YouTube channel. They got hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, hundreds of hours of content. I mean, it's a great YouTube channel. Uh, they support Dog Soldier. You can see them on my channel as well www.youtube.com forward slash Dog Soldier TV. Uh, just look for the MFK episodes or the guy peeing in the thumbnails. <laughs> <laughs> that was good stuff, yeah, too. I, I remember seeing that clip. <laughs> yeah, Bill had <laughs> Bill had to cut it out because I'm I'm sitting there taking a leak, and I hear a boom, <laughs> and I turned around and I'm holding that thing, and I just and Kevin Deshawn looked back at me with the camera, and of course I'm like I'm free willing it, you know, and uh, yep. Bill's like I had to cut your penis off the show so we could show it on Sportsman Channel. <laughs> See, that's the kind of thing. You you watch the MFK Game Calls channel, you'll get to see all that stuff, <laughs> well, raw, uncensored. You know, I'll, I tell everybody right now, dude. I tell everybody, and I'll tell everybody right now. If I ever make a change or if sponsors or whatever happens and TV goes away, you will see Dog Soldier in a form you have never seen him before. <laughs> and and, and I'm, I'm me on TV, and just like you guys are you, no matter what show you're on. But, you know, it's just it's always missing something. TV, everybody wants to grow up and be a TV guy. And I tell everybody, you know, they ask me, they say, what is the, the, the best way to get into the outdoor industry? I tell them, go to college and get a marketing degree. It well, is. I, well, how do we have a TV show that way? Well, here's the deal. All of us TV guys with shows want your money. So if you're a marketing guy, you can hunt on any TV show you want. Just say, yeah, I'd like to come to Iowa and hunt big whitetails with you. Oh, oh, done. I'll get you a governor's tag. Or, hey, I'd like to come to Kansas and hunt coyotes with you on your show if we do this deal. Oh, done. I mean, you get, gee, many Christmas. I mean, there's so much, there's so many things that, that go along with this business, but being the TV host <laughs> is not the good part. Uh, yeah, people don't realize it's not quite the fairy tale everybody thinks no. it is. I mean, and you've done great with it. I mean, shoot, I I it's catch every lucky, episode. Man. I mean, you you've done you've done a lot. I mean, even from the hunter specialties, uh, from all that, the videos, Operation Predator, and now the Dog Soldier and stuff. I mean, shoot, I've kept up with you. We've been friends. I mean, friends and foremost first, and then you know you've done a great that. job with it, and uh, you know we. We all just try to do the best we can, and, you know, it is what it is. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people, they don't see a lot of behind-the-scenes yeah. stuff. I think that's that's the key. I think a lot of people, they they get kind of confused a lot of times, and uh, they don't see some of the business changes and the business relationship and all the underground stuff that happens behind the scenes. Yeah. You know, they'll get upset with you at times, but they don't realize how much – like politics, oh, the uh, business side and everything is involved with this stuff. Like if you do this for a living, it's a lot different. I mean, this is basically our job. So, yeah. I, mean, I mean, we do it for fun for sure, but you know, it, it turns into work at times and you know, I mean, you still have to make a living. We all, we all still have bills to pay. We all still, you know, have to make a living at it. And, um, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I, I tell you what, it's, sheesh, man, I, I don't know, I, I appreciate all the kind words, I really do. Uh, man, it's like we're all just trampling through the mud trying to make it, and, and we're getting it done. I was talking to a, I was talking to a uh, marketing guy today, and he told me, he's like, you know, of course, I was belly aching, and he's like, I, I signed a, a, a big contract with a marketing company, you know, so I can become a better tool for my partners. And uh, that that made a lot of sense. I've become a better tool. <laughs> <laughs> Disregard that. I won't <laughs> say anything. I'll, I'll, I'll keep my mouth shut. <laughs> well, these are raw and uncut edited podcasts, so I don't edit the podcast. So, but anyway, uh, so we're trying to do everything good business wise here at Dog Soldier, you know. And I told this guy, I was like, man, it freaking makes me mad right now. 
all these guys starting YouTube channels and Facebook pages and and they kill coyotes and post 100 pictures a day and they got 25,000 subscribers on Instagram and he's like he's like well okay so who's viewing their stuff and I'm like I don't know and he goes do they know and I said well I don't know and he's like dude in today's age marketing directors are looking at Facebook likes and YouTube subs and like they they just disregard it they they're you know, if you sit down in front of a marketing director and say, I got a thousand people likes my fan page or a hundred thousand people likes my fan page, they ain't even gonna I mean the realist you know, Facebook when it first started seven or eight years ago, you, if you had twenty thousand likes, man, you were the freaking king bomb, you know. Well, now it's there's so much liking and clicking and and uh, it's really engagement and and what people's really wanting to see, and MFK has done a tremendous job at producing them kind of numbers. I mean, you guys have rocked. I mean, you guys have really rocked that part of the world for sure. Yeah, and I mean, that's the thing about it. I mean, we're not business guys. I mean, we just, you know, Tori and I, I mean, we've talked about this countless times. Like, you know, we just, we do what we think is right, and, you know, stuff happens. I mean, yeah. it, it really happens. I mean, we don't look at numbers. We don't hire marketing guys and all this. I mean, that that's just the way we do it. I mean, we do stuff the way, you know, <laughs> we want. And it, I don't yeah. know I don't know what has happened, but <clears throat> it, apparently, I mean, everybody seems to like it. Oh, I know what's kind happened. of what we roll with. So. Yeah. I, I know what's <laughs> happened, man. It's engagement. I, I know exactly what's happening. I've sat and watched it from day one, and, it's funny, me and Tori was talking about that today. He's like, Kreiner, I don't care if you ever use our diaphragm again, you know, but that one episode you do with us is worth what we pay you, and it's freaking awesome. Oh, and, it is. And yeah, it is. I, I mean, it's, I always enjoy that one. I mean, it's usually, it, it's pretty fun. I mean, you're, you're going to catch some good uh, some good bloopers and all that oh, yeah. stuff in that one, yeah. too. I mean, that, I enjoy it. I mean, y'all have a good time. I, hopefully, man, I can get down and uh, yeah. film one of those with you guys one year. You need to get down. With that being said, everybody, I'm Steve Kreiner, the Dog Soldier. This is Plain and Simple Predator Podcast. We've got Jason Gross close on. www.youtube.com forward slash MFK Game Calls or forward slash Dog Soldier TV. You can see the MFK guys in action. And you can find them at www.youtube, or excuse me, dot mfkgamecalls.com. And uh, you can also find their diaphragms at tacticalpredatorhunter.com, our store. Appreciate you all for listening. Uh, it's been an epic podcast. There's more information in this podcast than a guy can soak up. You can watch it again and again and again on YouTube, iTunes, or SoundCloud. With that being said, I'm getting the hell out of here. Peace out, homies. I'll catch you later. <laughs>